Hello, welcome to the channel. My name is Caveman Aston, and I've not been posting a video because I've been doing some of this. So I've been having great fun doing a little bit of mountain biking and some free running. So if you guys want to see some more of those videos, do let me know down in the comments. Um, but today in the workshop or the garage, and I've ordered myself some of these. So for anybody that doesn't know, this is a glass scale. Um, so what we've got inside of this box here is um, a rather expensive bit of a glass, I believe, which is etched. Uh, very accurately and this here is a sensor that slides up and down and then this is a cable that's going to go to a screen I'll show you that in a second and what happens is that this I'm going to attach onto the milling machine that's just over in the corner one bit stays static and the other bit attaches to one of the uh, slides on the bed so I, so the bed moves left and right backwards and forwards and then you've got the, uh, the column with the vertical bit, which effect like a drill, that bit can move vertically. Um, so I've got three of these, all different lengths, uh, specific to how long or how long the travel is for each of those sections. So I'm going to be making some brackets, uh, finding interesting ways of mounting it to the mill. I'm really reluctant to go drilling any holes into it because it's still new-ish to me. I'm reluctant to drill holes in it if I don't need to. So I've got a load of right angle bracket. I'm hoping, in my head, I've got a few ideas floating about. I think I can work out how to do it with a minimal amount of holes drilled. So that's the video for today. Let's get stuck into it. All right, so here we are. I've got the three different length scales. Obviously, they all look the same, apart from the length. Just over here, there's some different covers that will go and just sit over them like that. They help stop any of the swarf or dust, metal dust I suppose, uh, from collecting in there so they should last a lot longer. We may or may not need them depending on how the fitment and placement goes. And we've got one of those for each different length of these. And this thing over the back here is a screen with an arm. I've already assembled the arm. Um, a screen like that. Uh, for anybody that's interested in a specific one, it is uh, Yihao, Y-I-H-A-O Go, uh, Y-H-800-3. Uh, so I went for an LCD one rather than the individual LEDs that run across. This will give me, um, so this will give me the on-screen uh, ability to do sort of various fancy things such as uh, setting out a set of holes in say a circle or a grid of holes rather than the other ones where it is possible but it's not as intuitive. That's the only reason I went for this is it just makes everything a little bit more simple. Um, and then over in the back corner there's a couple of bags of nuts and bolts. As you might expect, different fitments and a stack of different brackets may or may not get used. One bit I forgot to mention on the far end of these is you've just got one of these it's a standard connector that plugs into the back of the LCD screen and that's how all of the, these get power and the uh, data gets sent back to the screen to tell it how, it how far it's moved. These I think were the 0.5 millimeter, 0.5 micron, I can't remember. let's see if it says. So yeah these are the 5 micrometer ones so 0.5 
of a millimeter. So really tiny movements. Hello, it's Aston from the future. So I started the project and all was complicated. So what I've decided to do is I'm going to mix and match the video that I've recorded. So some of the audio may be talking about stuff I'm going to be doing, but for the most part I'm going to just turn the majority of the work into a time lapse so you can see what I did. And I'm going to show you now what the end result looks like. So then you can then see how I've gone through to fit it all. Uh, so I'm going to take you through all of the parts that I've made, how they work, and some of the pitfalls I found out right about five minutes ago while I was trying to do a last fitment. Uh, a couple of the nuts I can't actually get to tighten up, which makes it awkward to adjust. So I'll take the camera down, get it up nice and close to all the parts, show you how they've been installed, uh, hopefully how it comes apart, you'll be able to see that, um, and I'll point out some of those pitfalls again. Um, so let's get stuck in, hopefully it won't jump back and forth too much between future and past me, so uh, let's get stuck in. <laughs> So to give you guys a bit of orientation, here we are at the front lower side of the mill. And down here is the first bit that I've made. So on the bottom edge here, hopefully you'll be able to see, there's just a bit of right angle bracket uh, that I've cut just this front edge off, just so it doesn't overhang here too much. That runs all the way down to the end, the same length as this. Um, all I've then done is I've measured and cut the slots for the bolt holes, so there's one there, one at the back. These washers, I've had to put a flat spot on the back so that it doesn't interfere with this edge. Otherwise, that all mounts up fine. I've then got some mounting holes here that go through this onto here. Um, because these are slots up and down on both ends, these are then height adjustable with a single uh, threaded hole in the back of this. So that's this bit fully mounted up. Then I've got the actual slide bit here, hopefully you can see that, that moves as this table moves back and forth. So I'll take you around the back and show you how that all comes together. So here we are around the back of the mill. This uh, was currently or was mounted just to a single metal bracket across the back here. This bracket to be precise. So what I've done is I've taken this off, used these two holes to mark up two holes on another bit of right angle bracket. This bit of right angle bracket runs from this hole here to this hole here and then comes across until it's just about in line with uh, the scale. And then what I've done is I've put, taken part of the right angle bracket off, so hopefully you can see that there. So the last bit of the right angle bracket remaining is just this bit, all of this bit I've taken off, and now I've added another right angle bracket on here. So what I've done is I've put slots on the underside here, where the two bolts are currently, that allows me some adjustment to move it further away and closer on here, just to get it tuned in. These are the bolts that I can't currently get to when everything's installed, so I've had to get it as close as I can, nip it up by hand, then take it off and properly screw it up tight. So that is pretty close, it's not as great as, it would, as I'd like it, but it does do the trick. So what now happens is this will mount on Ooh. So what now happens is this mounts on here, there's slots in this so it is slightly height adjustable so it doesn't rub on the ways underneath, so that's, that will have height adjustment there. This bracket as the original goes on the back just to spread the load as the screws go through the rubber. So screws go through there, through the rubber, through the bracket and into the table. So it uses the existing holes, so I've not had to drill and tap anything new. Um, the bracket then overhangs here, and then those slots that you saw here and here line up with the holes on here and here. 
so that gives it the vertical adjustment there as well so all of that then ends up nice and square the bracket on the back doesn't take up much space um, so the table still has full depth to be able to travel backwards and forwards um, and then yeah, so that's that's everything with this bit, and like I said, the only real issue that I've got is those two bolts on the underside, because this and the metal bracket it's mounted to are too close into the table, but I've not got enough horizontal room to actually be able to turn it at all, let alone be able to sort of nip it, take it out, do another individual bit on the hex key. Um, unfortunately, it's just the way it is. Um, so the next scale is the one on the front. on this already but what we've got is there's some nuts in here that were originally used as like bump stops so there was in the center here a little bit of metal um, that kept the track on this uh, sort of scale here uh, for the measurements and there were some little circular sort of bump stops that would have been able to bump up against it to become hard limit stops so you could always traverse the same amount of distance I've never used them I don't have any intention to immediately um, because if I've got the, the fancy digital readout it should be fine so they are M6 bolts uh, here's the scale itself the M6 bolts go through here and screw into these two bump stops or the old bump stop whatever it is So it sits something like that, this isn't quite how it is when it's fully fitted up, it does lift up a little bit, so there's a little bit of height adjustment within this. Um, and then what I'll do is I'll bring you in closer and show you the bit in here. just underneath the scale so I try and lift it up just a fraction to give you a little bit more viewing space um, so what I've done is I've taken just a, a bit of flat metal about five mil thick that I've had uh, in my spare stock I've used the two drill holes from that little plate that I said was already there that was used as part of the measurement reading and bump stop I've then drilled two holes countersunk them so that the uh, Allen head countersink bolts don't sit proud of it and then I've drilled two, drilled and tapped two M5 holes so these holes match up with the holes that's on the scale so the scale slides along there and the uh, hole, the holes, the bolts then just poke through these two holes screw into that and that's then fixed so that's fixed to the bit of table that doesn't move and obviously this is then fixed to the bit of table that slides so that it all slides and we get a usable scale. So that's all the scales that I'm fitting for the moment. I'm just going to mount them up permanently now. I do need to make some little spacers to go in above or between here and the table. I'm um, going to cover them over with the 
aluminium brackets that come just to protect them from swarf. So that's all the brackets I'm going to fit, just the X and Y for the moment. They're all done, I just need to do some fine tweaks, so sort of cutting up a few nuts, bouncing them all. I just need to make some spaces to go on the uh, cross slide of the table, um, just so that he, as I tighten the bolts down it doesn't flex the, uh, the glass scale. Because as I had to add in a bit of metal where the plate sat previously. So just need to finish off those final bits, but basically it's done. I have got a scale for the vertical, so the Y, that, that the, the column for the actual uh, head of the mill. I have got one, intend to do it, I am going to do that in a separate video because this has taken so long in itself. Um, if you've got any questions, please ask. Um, I said I appreciate not everybody's got one of these, but those that do and want to try and do it, you could face similar problems. Um, but otherwise, thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it's been helpful. Um, and I have got another two videos planned, two videos planned quite quickly. Um, I've just brought myself a new vacuum cleaner for the workshop. Uh, sort of fancy, wet and dry vacuum cleaner. And I brought myself a new MIG welder. So I'll be unboxing those might not be everybody's taste but hopefully it'll be useful to people and don't forget i still need to fit the screen to the mill so that'll be happening in another video that will be coming soon so watch out for that as well and then after that i've had a request from somebody to uh do a basic or how basic can you get type of forging so i'm gonna get like the bare minimum that i think i think that you need to be able to do some forging maybe do a little simple knife and if you've got any suggestions on what you'd like to see instead of a knife, do let me know. But that's the plan. Uh, thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed it, please consider hitting the like button and uh, subscribe would be great. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.